Gamersops are having a sale right now for a limited time only, either until stocks run out or the 9th of February at 2 p.m. EST, where if you use my code THORIN, T-H-O-R-I-N, at the website gamersops.gg, you will get 22% off your order, anything on the website, instead of the usual 10%. Obviously, I love Gamersops. It's a delicious energy formula. has a really nice long peak, a nice slow taper off. doesn't have the hard crash. doesn't taste all chemically. doesn't have all chalky residue. dissolves nicely enough, doesn't taste like absurd flavors, actually nice and well-balanced palate sort of um, enjoyable flavors. I think I go all across the board. I like, like white grapefruit, it's kind of got a tangy element to it. Citrus lemonade, it's all your favorite sort of lemony flavors with a nice sweetness to it. Acai blueberry is a very understated one if you just want kind of a chill, almost more of like a vitamin water type drink. Watermelon ice, similarly one of the OG ones, but I've always enjoyed it as just like a nice sort of flavor at the back of it. They obviously have all the Waifu shirts and shakers. By the way, if you're going to make an order, make sure you add some free samples and you get to try some other flavors as well. They also have tea. Did you believe it or not? You've got like a black tea, yerba mate. They've got this special one that's caffeine free with L theanine to help you go to sleep, this sleepy time one. Some of the people in this episode seriously need to be sent to bed. Some of them without dinner, maybe just with some tea. So this is going to be one of my mean tweets slash comments where, you know, Darren versus mean tweets. But instead of just making it tweet, I actually told my YouTube manager, just go and get mean comments from everywhere. Go to YouTube comments, Twitter, Reddit if you want. He hasn't put many Reddit ones on yet. And basically, he sourced them for me. And I have actually done one of these before. I did one with Flashpoint. I don't think I had separately clipped. I think it was just on the VOD for that date. Flashpoint 2, if people remember. I did one with, I think, like Double Tap or one of those like American orgs that was in CS. Did one with me years and years ago. Like, I think it's ESL New York or during that Masters Las Vegas. So it'll be like early 2017, all it 2016. I think it was Las, Las Vegas. And basically, why they are actually fun is one... You're not supposed to like read it, think about it, come up with like, you're supposed to just sort of react in the moment. Also, actually, the hilarity of how unhinged they are is actually one of the best parts of it. Like, I have to say, when you actually read these out loud and then you think about them as an actual real human in the real world, they look so stupid. I mean, all of them, they all take the L the second you read the comment out. Like, they look such, like, like mega unhinged losers, basically. This is why I often say the online domain is inverted. Like, the rules there's like, who won or who won the engagement or what wins it. Like, just people clicking like or replying. Like, this, they have the weirdest kinds of... It's just about whether or not what you said makes sense or was funny or interesting, mate. Spoiler, there are obviously, as you can imagine, because this first one's League of Legends, reckless fans, upset haters, T1 stands. You can imagine the sort of people drawn like a moth to a flame to my Twitter account, unable to, I don't know, not tweet at my Twitter account. You'd really think for real, like I control the simulation, right? And they have to convince me or something and that will then, I will make it manifest to the rest of the universe. Like I'm like the ultimate godhead of fucking Hinduism or something. And then my dream becomes reality. So if they can just convince me or tell me I'm wrong, they will actually will make what they want to happen in life come true. Except of course, that sort of unhinged hyperbolic statement for me, it was just a joke, but actually sounds like their worldview, doesn't it? So let's get into it, because this is going to be a fun one, I can tell. So this is a few of them from YouTube initially. So this one, we won't read the names out, goes, I don't understand the so-called eye test you and Dom constantly talking about, right? Already, the fact... It didn't say talk about, and it's gone immediately, so that grammatically it's incorrect, and it's you and Dom constantly talking about. I'm already so worried. I mean, the immediate first thing I'm thinking is, if you don't, because that's not a typo, if you don't know how to read and speak English, how can I imagine you know how to think in English and therefore understood what I meant, actually were able to like move the idea around in your mind and then analyze it and come up with it. This just seems to me like you're a bot. You saw some words, and then you, you just, a load of shite. You saw the word like uh, like t1 and a bunch of shite came out of your mouth that's that's you're more like a rock and sock and robot someone punches you and then your fist goes out and punches like that like you're like old school chris lieben when he was in the ufc shout out to that reference since when do we use our eyes to judge if a team is good or not <laughs> Woo! i love it because what's brilliant about that by the way is what he's implying is that we don't use our eyes to judge if a team's good or not. So basically, if on paper, a team's won everything, they must be the greatest team of all time. It doesn't matter what his eyes tell him. He could watch in the server. They could just be absolute shit. The level could be way lower that year. The meta could be whack. There could just be a thing where like one player plays an OPG. Doesn't matter. No, no, no. Don't, don't use your eyes. Don't use your eyes. Don't use your eyes. 
Don't watch the game. In fact, by his logic, why do we watch the games at all? Why not just use Gamepedia or Liquipedia and that'll tell us who the best is. In fact, don't even do that. Just take, look at pictures of people lifting the World Trophy and whoever did it the most is the greatest of all time. So you know Bengi? Yeah, he's way better than Uzi I, the shy, rookie, deft. You can go down the list, all of them. He's way better than all of them. I mean, why would you need to use your eyes to look at the game and know that he isn't? Or think about them. No, no, no. Just don't, don't you do that. Just, just look at websites. He goes, if JDG, that's right, this guy's a T1 stand triggered about JDG. If JDG looks so insanely good under your eyes, by the way, why does he have to put under my eyes? Like when you, does he, is he actually implying, by the way, he might actually be blind? Because that would then explain why he can't actually write and read. He doesn't quite know. Like, because here's the thing, if he is blind, then I'd understand. Because when he says that, if JDG looks insanely good under your eyes, I'll just ask you this. Aside from worlds, were there other people out there watching JDG going, now this isn't even insanely good. This is just, just often to me. If so, by the way, that would be where you should start your argument. You should actually start with, actually forget all the other things you're saying. I watched them and they weren't even that good and then explain why. If you did so, you'd do a great actual job of undercutting everything I'm saying. Because in this scenario, you're just taking my premise at face value. It's okay. If they're so insanely good under your eyes, then explain to me, or I must explain to this random person on the internet. Like, I'm not allowed, by the way, to just put videos on the internet and then him just comment what he thinks about. I must literally explain to him. It's very important that I do that. I mean, basically, I owe him this explanation. So get ready. Explain to me why so many of their best of five wins are at a three to two mark. Right. Here's the funny thing about that, right? Is when he says that, there's an implication he hasn't yet explained, right? which is that if they're at a three to two mark, presumably, I mean, he's a cretin, but I'll finish his thought for him. If they're so dominant and good, wouldn't they win 3-0 every time, right? That is the logic that we're basically implying at this point in time. And what, we're, what he's trying to imply is they're just three to two all the time, aren't they? Now, the problem with that, obviously, goes like this. Were they three to two all the time? I don't think they were somehow, but we'll just go and have a quick look anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just do a quick rundown for you guys. I've got GamePD up on the screen. So if you remember, in LPL Spring, which they won because they never lost any best of fives, they played against BLG, and it was three to two. Ooh, got me there. Three to two, there's one. Then they played against EDG and three zero them. Ah, oh, so there's one not, so one to one. So one not three two, one three two. Then in the final, they won three one against BLG. So in the spring split, they had one three to two series. It was early in the playoffs. It was their first playoff series, and it was against what ended up being the second best Chinese team, maybe the second best team in the world in light of their MSI results afterwards. So if the question is, why when you play the second best team in your region or in the world, do you sometimes still beat them both times, but three to two, one? instead of like, you know, 3-0 every time or 3-1 every time. It's like, I don't know, maybe they just won one extra game. I don't really know what the point we're making is. But there we go, that's spring already. One out of three times, they've gone three to two. So then let's go to MSI. At MSI, you might know that they only played four series because they just won all the upper bracket matches. So they went... um 3-0 against Golden Guardians, so not all of 3-2. They played BLG, the team that went 3-2 against before. Second best team in the world, potentially. They 3 0 them, so it was another 3-0. Then they played T1, the second best Korean team, and went 3-2. So we've got a second 3-2 to go along with four that weren't 3-2. Then in the final, they beat BLG 3-1. Oh, BLG, that one that beat 3-2. Oh, yeah, by the way, they've now just won their fourth series over BLG. And this is the third out of four times they haven't been taken over fifth game. So far... We've had, um, I think, five times they haven't gone 3-2 and two that they have. So it's not looking good for them so far. But let's keep going. There's still a split in this world, right? So then we go to LPL Summer. They also won that. They won Spring. They won Summer. Uh, they won M MSI. And then they just didn't win Worlds. So at Summer Playoffs... BLG, by the way, was number one in the regular season. So what happened was, in the opening match, they played LNG, who ended up being the revelation of the playoffs, and they beat them 3-2. Oh, he's got one. He's got a third 3-2, guys. I'm in deep shit now. Third 3-2 to, to go with, what was it before? I think we said five times that it wasn't. So, ooh, it's, it's even an up, though. Five to three now, guys, in my favour. Then they played BLG, that team that at the beginning, they 3-2. So, fuck, I'm scared now, because they always go 3-2, and BLG's actually the best Chinese team, or the second best Chinese. 3-0. 3-0 clap. So that's 6-3 to three for me so far. But then in the final, watch out, LNG gets two games. It's a 3-2. to two. So in summer, they've gone 3-2 to two twice. So that means what? I think that's four times they went 3-2. to two, And six times they went... Um, 
think of that six we're counting that they didn't go three to two. There's worlds left though. At worlds, obviously the only best of fives was they played KT in the first round. That was a three one, so it's seven to three. And then they lost to T one, but presumably you don't count losses, right? It's the one loss of the year. So out of ten times, a team that never lost best of fives got taken to five games three times out of the ten and still won the games. And that tells you that they didn't look insanely good because remember, if they look insanely good, then why are many of their best of fives three to two? Didn't I just explain that like, wasn't it like four? No, sorry, it's four. So, so, so it'd be four and I think seven, was it six or four, six or seven. So anyway, it's at best 40%, 40% of the time, three to two. Then he goes, if you want Oh, he, oh, wait, he goes, this eye test bullshit is so subjective and cannot be quantified. Yeah, that's why it's the eye test. If it was quantified, you wouldn't need it to be an eye test or say it was the eye test, would it? You really don't understand the premise of like perceiving something, thinking about it, and then ordering it in your mind. You need to actually outsource perception, evaluation, and then analysis so that you can rank something, but you can't rank something. You need something external to rank it, and therefore you don't rank it at all. So when you say, I think this is number one, you don't think that. You used an external factor, and the external factor told you it was. And by your logic, if that external factor had told you otherwise, like a team always went 3-0, then they must be the greatest of all time. So what's great is I could just go and show you some like LMS teams from like 2014, 2013, and we're just going like 15 and 1 in their split. So by your logic, they must actually have been like top five in the world. Doesn't matter that if you watch like the leagues was objectively right, they're, they're fucking terrible. They're not doing any of the macro moves, their individual micro moves. That's good. No, 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 no. That's all bullshit subjective stuff. Just look at the numbers on paper. They tell you. He goes, something might seem incredible in your point of view, might not be in others. Yet what's great about that is you haven't had that epiphany. You haven't figured out you're a fucking peon pleb who doesn't know League of Legends, esports history, formats, or anything about greatness. And so to you, you can't see it. I'm actually seeing the greatness, then describing and analyzing. It. You can't see it, and so you're going, maybe there's something wrong with you because I can't see it. The fact that you see it, you, why don't you explain to me why I should know this is great? And then he goes, if you want a fair discussion, oh, I don't want a fair discussion. No, no, I don't want, like, whatever fair means to you, I assume he means to you, I must say all the things you think. I don't want that. I just want my opinion. I want to analyse the game, and then honestly, because I've never lied in my entire esports career of 22 plus years, then I'm going to honestly tell you what I think and how I analyse the game with some jokes mixed in. That's what I want. I, I aren't here. I'm not a public servant. I am not obliged to have any kind of a discussion you want. So he goes, if you want a fair discussion about the best League of Legends team ever, you look at criteria. Oh, so now, to be fair, you must just do whatever this guy says. He gets to say it. No, there's, not, there's not any sourcing here. There's not like, well, we've all agreed. No, no. If you want to have a fair discussion, you must literally only discuss the criteria he tells you to. And those are world title count. Longevity, dominance level, etc. Those are the only ones that are allowed to count. The only ones. These should be, should, oh, says who? You, Billy Nobody. These should be your go to things to look at. Wait a minute, what do you mean look at? Why would I look at them? But no, no, no. How can I use my eye test and see a number's bigger than other? How would that work, eh? Yet somehow you circumvent all of these. I don't circumvent any of them. If you go watch the episode, like either the one about JDG and T1 or JDG being the greatest ever, or the one about the greatest teams ever on something into it, you'll see that we definitely don't ignore all those factors. I just shared them in at a different level of priority, which triggers idiots like this. And you notice when an idiot comments, all he ever does is go, oh, you don't think the thing I think is the most important and best is the best and most important. Then you don't count it at all. And you hate everything about that because they're cretins they can only work on a binary polarity of like your total shit cretin idiot nothing and they're god genius that's the only angle they can go with then he goes and dial down to things like eye test yeah what i do is i get like a load of data and instead of going then and watching the game and go what does this data actually infer like what could it be suggested i make the mistake of then watching the game which dials it down with you know more information and actually context and actually trying to figure out you know was this actually as good as a number on paper says Things like double elimination. We shouldn't consider whether double elimination exists or not, or if there was, how it would affect the tournament. Because since you never, ever could have had these tournaments be double elimination, it's irrelevant, right? It's irrelevant. So when we have MSI and um, BLG comes to the final, we should actually say, well, at other tournaments, we didn't have floor brackets. So actually, BLG didn't finish second. Actually, T1 was second. Yeah, actually, that's just the way that the tournament went. So um, let's just ignore reality, even what our eyes tell us again, right? Then he goes, T1 choking. Right, we should actually ignore T1 choking. 
Right, when Tiwo makes a final and we look with our eyes and see that they'd both lost to a lesser opponent, they played badly, got outplayed, didn't pull the trigger, were hesitant and people choked, we shouldn't count that. What we should do is just look on screen and go, well, they didn't win, so that one doesn't count, but then they did win elsewhere, so that one counts, so that's how it works. By the way, this T1 is also not the best team ever. Oh, thanks for telling me, no reasons given, by the way. So I don't know if you bring them up just to farm views or make content. Yeah, I've got the sense you don't know anything about me or my style of making content, but make some sort of stupid ass speculation about why I make content. You can obviously read my mind. I mean, you must have a bunch of objective metrics that tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing. There's no way you could be using your ear test of hearing what I'm saying and then trying to infer why I would do that. You know, kind of like what the eye test does with analysis. Like, you wouldn't ever do that. That'd be hypocritical. You should have go-to about, I don't know, view count, maybe see if the views go up if I talk about T1, maybe there's an angle I don't get as much in Git. No, he didn't do any of that, though, did he? He didn't do any of the things you said I should do in my world of making my content, but you don't do it in yours. So then we go to the last part. He goes, I don't care what kind of insane feet you have. Like, I'm just going to make a joke here and assume he just typoed that. And obviously, he just has heard all the rumors that I have the fucking sexiest feet of all time. And if you even just see my feet, it's so fucking insanely alluring that basically you just get like an erection for six hours until you just die from all the blood flow going there. And in fact, legend has it. It's like staring straight into Medusa's eyes. Like if you even see my feet, it's just over for you. So he's right. He shouldn't care what insane feet I have. The bottom line, oh, fucking hell, okay, Stone Cold's here now, okay. <laughs> the bottom line is if you don't win Worlds, you just cannot be in this conversation. And I don't understand how this is even a question. Yeah, because you'd have to actually use your brain test to evaluate how good are the formats. Do they produce the best player? Is there fluke elements involved? Could we make them more steady? But you don't do that. You just go, then you do win the Worlds, so you are the best. So that means every year, by this guy's logic, whoever wins Worlds is the best team that year. Every single year of League of Legends. Every single one. So TPA, they were the best team in 2012. If you want to go to, like, how about EDG in 2021? Does anyone think they were the best team in 2021? Well, I don't fucking know anyone. They weren't even considered a favourite coming in the tournament, but they weren't even in anyone else's top three. What about this year? T1 won. Were they the best team of this year? Were they? I mean, what's weird is he doesn't say if they were the best team this year. He just says they weren't the best team ever. And then, here's a good one. There are many other teams that had insane run, including World's Run. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So if you have a World's Run and you do elsewhere, that makes you the greatest. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Damn One Gaming had their domination from summer 2020 until MSI 2021. Between those time, terrible English again, not only did they never drop a single B or 5, they never drag a series to game 5 either. Oh, shit! Right, are you ready, guys? I'm going to actually show this guy why the eye test and more than just the score on paper is the most important part about a series. Because by his logic, right, if we had a world where T1 went as the team from Korea, and then, this is not a joke, every other team died in a plane crash going to the event, and then Riot had to bring up 15 other teams to replace them with so that the main event could have 16 teams, right? And then they play out the world, and at the end, T1 not only wins... In the BO5s, they 3 0 everyone, right? That makes that T1 lineup the greatest team to ever play League of Legends because they never went 3 2 with anyone ever. No, it doesn't matter. You're going to go, no, no, but Thor, that wasn't even the best team. The best teams all died in a play crashing. Yeah, exactly. It is important who the opponent is, right? As to how important the score of the series is. It's important what the meta is and how they played. It's even important things like strategically what they picked or the player level or some of the moves made by the teams and some of the macro movements made by the team. These are all important so that we. We know you can have a 3-2 that's an amazing one by the team that lost and you can have a 3-0 by the winning team that's just all right it wasn't even that crazy no 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 to this guy the 3-0 is always easily the most insane result ever meanwhile if you 3-2 that's the worst possible best of five and shows you cannot be the greatest team ever that you went 3-2 so that one not going 3-2 is why they're the greatest team of all time, literally. Against different opposition in different years of League of Legends, different meta, different patches, different everything. I mean, he doesn't even bother to mention, by the way, that like some of this shit was in the online fucking era. No, no, we're not even talking now about that. Some of this is on the internet and some people are playing from studios, etc. Like, no, no, let's not, let's ignore like when there wasn't in crowds and you used to just go to Iceland and stuff. No, no, let's not include anything of that because that would take a mixture of the eye test and context, which are the mortal enemies of this guy and the entire antithesis to how he sees League of Legends. And then he goes, they never drag a series to Game 5 either. SKT, you knew it would come back to them, had four 
back-to-back international champions. He means championship, but we know what he means. And was the first team to ever win both MSI and Worlds in the same calendar year. Right, here's the obvious question I'm going to ask immediately. When he says that they had four back-to-back, right, I've always made it very clear every single time that the best team to be a team logically has to just be a five-man lineup. It could be six if you rotate someone in, but it can't be that you have one player one year, then another another year. So when he goes four back-to-back, he's counting SKT with, like, fucking Marin, and then he's counting them with the lineup that then had Duke. To him, that's totally fine to just count all of those. That's, that's all just good, right? And then when he goes, they're the first team ever to win MSI and Worlds in the same calendar year. So logically, that's the greatest team ever. Now, what's hilarious about that, guys, is just follow this logic. He means 2016 SKT, because that's the only time they ever did it. They won MSI, that was the one they beat CLG in the final. And then they won Worlds, obviously beating Samsung in the final in five games, right? First of all, the irony of that, I've just said it, didn't I? What was the score of the final of that Worlds that they won? It was 3-2. And who was it against Samsung, who wasn't even a contender and did it with LCK? So they went 3-2 in the most important series. By his own logic, they can't be the greatest. And then, let's just think about it. Sit. SKT 2016 won Worlds, SKT 2013 won Worlds, SKT 2015 won Worlds, and SKT 2023 won Worlds. Of those four, I think most people would say that the worst of the SKT teams was the 2016 one that won MSI and Worlds. When people say the greatest SKT of all time or the greatest team of all time, it tends to be either 2015 SKT or 2013 SKT. And those were the years they didn't win MSI and Worlds. And guess what? You know, in 2013, in the semis against Najin, Black Saw, the team everyone cried and said, shouldn't even have been there. Should be KT Rolster instead. Oh, by the way, they went 3-2 against them. <laughs> With Nagni. Can you believe that? 3-2. That eliminates you. But then, okay, what about this? Go to 2015. That was the one where they obviously just 3 0 everyone and then 3-1 coup in the final, right? Ooh, that's big time shit there, right? Oh, that's it. They lost uh, MSI and <laughs> they lost it 3-2 to ADG, by the way. <laughs> And then we're really talking about three twos eliminate you. You daft cunt. This is your own logic. So if you go back in season three, SKT went three to two against fucking KT Roaster in summer, didn't they? So that eliminates that team for me, the greatest of all time. Then the same year at Worlds, they went three two. So there we go. They're, they're out because multiple times they went three two. Then we'll go to the next one, 2015. Now you might think you just said Thor they had the most dominant run ever at Worlds. Yeah, at Worlds. If you go back, they're having close series against two. Like, wasn't it fucking like CJ? I think it was like a three two in spring when they used Easy Hoon. Then, um, I mean, they've had a whole bunch, haven't they, all over the place. Then you go the next year, the season six he's talking about, by the way, where was T1 in the summer finals? Oh, they didn't make the summer finals because they lost 3-2. They lost 3-2. JDG wins 3-2. That makes them bombs. These guys lost 3-2 to KT Rolster, a team that didn't even go to fucking Worlds in season six. They lost the series to them. And then also, let's just go and throw this out there. You then go to this year, bro, not only did they not win any LCK titles, so they're not even winning 3-2, you're comparing them with JDG, but also, because I notice he says JDG wasn't, but then he doesn't even mention who the best team of this year was. Oh, and by the way, they went 3-2 three times against KT Rolster this year, off the top of my head. Yeah, I think they did. They went one in spring and twice in summer. Winning 3-2 makes you a bomb. It makes you not good. Oh, and then getting murked by Gen G 3-0. That must be legit as fuck, right? Give me a break. This guy's an absolute joker, isn't he? Don't worry, there's loads of upset ones. I said the KC solo laners have been a fucking bummer so far because obviously Cabochard and Sakan were having a really bad performance. This guy goes, the GOAT ADC upset is currently on a 13-game losing streak. His last official win was in June last year, 218 days ago, and he's about to finish 10th, second split in a row. So, okay, first of all, when he goes, the GOAT ADC upset... When have I ever said upset was the GOAT? I've not only never said he's the GOAT up ADC, I've never said he's the GOAT European ADC. I've, I've never even said that ever in my entire life. But because I haven't said anything derisive, like that you could be say it was like stupid or you could say it was just an idiotic comment, you have to just make one up that I've said he's the GOAT. So that's called a straw man. So you made a straw man. I burned the straw man to pieces. Well, I wasn't in there, mate. So don't worry. It's not the wicker man. I'm not in there. I'm just watching you build straw man going, that ain't me. So you go, I killed the straw man, Thorin. Yeah, you didn't kill me though, did you? You got a straw man. Man, not Thorin. And then he goes, he's on a 13-game losing streak. Yeah? 
You haven't even given any reasons there. Logically, you're implying he's the reason why, and he's playing badly, right? And then it goes, his last official win was in June last year, 218 days ago. By the way, the implication there, to make it a good faith statement, would be that, like, when it says June last year, to, that implies, like, he must have had loads of chances to win since then. June 18th. Now, let's just have a quick look up, shall we? This won't take me very long, boys. So, obviously, yes, if we look this year... His team was losing loads until they won those two right at the end, right? But what I'll do really quickly is I'll just go back and I'll actually have a look. So what you'll do is this. You go back to the summer season last year, which is obviously the main thing he's talking about here. And what you'll find is, obviously, that's when Vitality went 1-8, and eight, remember? It was actually really embarrassing. They went 1-8, and eight, and the one win was, I think it was actually really early on, wasn't it? Let me see. Yes, it was really early on against SK Gaming, as he says, on the 18th of June. Then what happened was this, guys. They then played, um, let me see, that'd be two. They played seven more games, and then that was it for the rest of the year because they didn't qualify to the season finals. So for the rest of the year, there were seven games, and they lost them all. So he lost seven games in, at that point in time, he said June 18th. So for the rest of that year, we're already talking about almost half a year, seven losses in half a year. But that's not very many losses compared to half a year, is it? You're not really playing much. But he's trying to make it sound like Ops has been playing every day since then and he hasn't had any fucking wins since then. Here's the weird thing, mate. Then you go after that to this year. Well, this year, I'll just look it up right now. When did this year even actually fucking begin in terms of like LEC competition? So the first match was in... Where is it? The first match, obviously, the 2024 season was the winter season part. And it took place on the 13th of January. So basically, over a time span of something like, I think it was like the 3rd of July to the... 13th of January, there wasn't any games that Upset played in. But you've tried to make it sound super sick by putting how many days. And then he goes, and he's about to finish 10th, second split in a row. Okay. What's the point, by the way? Like, what, what relevance does that have to what I've just said? Like, does that make it so that actually Cabochard and Sacken haven't been a bummer so far? In fact, if you don't dispute even what I'm saying, that the solo laners, in Europe, by the way, the mid lane region, the solo laners are shit... And then you're like, yeah, and with shit solo ladies, he's about to come last place with no comment about his play. You don't even say, which at least you'd have some balls if you did, you don't even say he actually sucks. Why don't you just say he's bad? Say he sucks and that's why, and he's the reason why they're going 13 games. Maybe even tight together goes, you only had both from last year. I'm making a steel man for your shit argument. The steel man would be like, hey, he even had Bow and Vitality last year, totally different team, and they were last as well. So aside from Bo, what other connecting factor is there, man? You didn't even do that because you don't even have the spark of life or creativity. You don't have any divine essence in you, so you couldn't even come up with that fucking angle, could you? Don't worry, there's plenty more. I will dominate. He gets tagged in here. This guy goes, how many times does Upset have to get last place for you to say that there is something wrong with him? Obviously, very obviously mechanically skilled. Like Alfaria. Alfaria is obviously just a domain of, it's a literal lane kingdom. It's a place where you go and there's only a lane. There is no game after that. You can't even group. It's just a 1v1 set of lanes. Alfaria, the land of Alfaria. Sounds like a Lars von Trier film, doesn't it? But somehow they always bomb out. He means bomb. But okay, fair enough. Maybe he's not English, right? I'm going to imagine Alexander Bella isn't, in fact, English. So when he goes, how many times does Upset have to get last place for you to say that there's something wrong with him? Oh, there's definitely something wrong with him. Like, one, he has terrible choices in teammates in general, I would say. I think he's made some really weird choices in terms of how he's, like, dealt with internal politics. Like, some teams he has demanded everything. Some teams he hasn't. And sometimes not demanded. It's fucked him more. Sometimes demanded it has actually helped him. But that's, that's the part of the negotiation and the battle of being a star in teams. By the way, when he goes, there's obviously something wrong with him. I mean, there is. <laughs> like, what do you want? <laughs> Here's the difference. I can just say that. To you, that would end your world to say that, like, Reckless had something wrong with him. And then he goes, obviously mechanically skilled. Okay, brilliant. So then there's a good reason to think he's a good player, right? Somehow they always bum out. That's it. No point made, by the way. Not like an explanation. It's just like they finish last sometimes and they're mechanically skilled. I mean, you insert what I think. Uh, doesn't it mean they're bad and something wrong? Well, by that logic, when they don't bomb out, what does that say about them? Does it say that there's something right about them? So when upset with that Schalke team, which at the time nobody thought was going to be a top team, comes like fourth in LEC, 
Does that actually mean there's something right with him when he's carrying old ass trick, etc.? And Abadagi was a little rookie. What about when he's on Fnatic and he has a role swapped top laner to jungle and then a brand new rookie top laner who's an idiot and then he makes it all the way to the final of LEC and go to Worlds? Does that mean something was right about him? No, no, because it can only be, it's only his failures in the times he comes last that we ever are supposed to judge his career off. By the way, when it's people like Reckless, we're never supposed to judge off their failures. We're only supposed to look at their successes and their great splits and then judge them off that. That's what we're supposed to judge them off. Because otherwise, I don't know, crazy idea, maybe you'd realise there was something wrong with you. Why do you only care when they bomb out, right? That's be my obvious question of this guy. This is a brilliant one. 17th of January, so it was this year. It was Re Reckless was playing, obviously, on T1 Challengers. Mega hyped. Even LOL Esports is tweeting about... They'd never tweet about a fucking T1 Challenger game otherwise, by the way. But okay, the spectacle of Reckless playing there is a big deal. So they do this picture, and it's like, bro, can whoever takes these pictures give him a chance? Like, he surely didn't look like this the whole game. But you have picked a game where he looks like this. So what I've done here is... Let's just read the comment first. This guy goes, such a weird thing to post when he has absolutely smurfed three games. Hatred gets you nowhere in life. Especially when the person you're hating on literally never thinks about you. Aren't you like 40, 40 dude, LMAO? We'll just break this down. This is a masterclass. So first of all, what, I've, what has he responded to? I must have put some insane critique of Reckless. Oh no, what I've done is I've taken lyrics, which you can even just quote. They're clearly lyrics, by the way, they're, free, they're actually composed out on the page. But you could just take and quote them. And you could get, I don't know, any search engine. Google's a good one. Put them into Google and you'll immediately find out those are obviously the lyrics of the song Bottom by Tool off their album Undertow, which came out in, what, I don't know, 1993, 1992 or so? 1993, I think. So when this album came out, this was a song, the one that features Henry Rollins, where it's obviously like a really dark song isn't it? it was sort of like a dredging component to it now reckless think about why i might put like dead inside dead because look at his fucking face it's not like i've just picked a picture of him that we're getting this fucking like diploma from school like hey with his mom and i'm like dead inside look at his fucking face my dude Look at his face. He looks like he has a thousand yard stare and he is still in his mind in the final of season eight worlds and everything after that went wrong and he just wishes like, oh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and we beat IG and I'm a world champion. Mate, look at his face, bro. What is that? That looks like he's actually depressed, mate. But even then, it's not a serious comment. It's a joke, isn't it? So because he looks dead inside and because he hasn't accepted an LEC offer or played support in Europe and he's gone and run away to Korea to play stupid little exhibition games, as far as I'm concerned, in a Challengers League, that's not even the Academy League, but you bombs don't know that. Because he's done that, yeah, I think somewhat when he's losing, because he was losing all these series, losing the first four series, I imagine he felt a bit dead inside. I imagine that's why he looked like that. He's stuck in fucking Korea. This guy's a guy, by the way, who the Korean environment ain't the right one for him, mate. This isn't the world he wants to live in. Then let's read your comment. Such a weird thing to post. Right, okay. So he smurfed three games. Who gives a shit what he does in that league? I, you know what? None of the results count in that league. It's fucking worthless. It's a dog shit league. You couldn't even name three people on the opposing teams, you bomb. And then he goes, hatred gets you nowhere in life. Right, let's see if you hate on me and the rest of this comment then. Because obviously if it gets you nowhere, you won't then do it to me. And then he goes... Especially when the person you're hating literally never thinks about you. I mean, there's literal video evidence online that he thinks about me and the comments that I've made and then has his own thoughts and his own sense about me and who I am. Also, by the way, you'll find this out in a future upcoming video, but he really thinks about all of it and he's obsessed with it. But you'll find out about that soon. I'll keep that one for little dickheads like you. And then finally, remember, hatred gets you nowhere. Aren't you like 40, dude? LMO. So his implication is bad to me, 40. And no, hatred gets you nowhere, but apparently my age makes me a moron or something. Who the fuck knows? There's never any logic. There's never any logic involved in these. They're just people screaming at the TV, you got to remember. Right, what I'm going to do for this one to make it pure banter is I'm actually just going to show you the reply. You're going to see how unhinged it is. Then I'm going to show you what he's replying to. It's fucking mad. So get ready. This guy goes, may I ask you a question? Do you have any kind of intellectual problem? Like, are you retarded or something? Because I swear, every tweet I read from you is pure bullshit. I mean, it's admirable the ability that you have to do it, surely. Right, holy fuck, this must be what crazy tweet he's replying to. <laughs> let's, get, let's, get, let's get ready, guys. Right. 
You know when Rogue, who's terrible now, they split, and even they know the eye. Talk to some of their players, you idiots. When they, obviously, at their peak in like 2019, 2020, 2021, they were like among the top teams with among the best records in the league in 2020 and 2021. But famously, they always lost to G2 all the time until that 2021 split. And even then, after that, they often lost to G2 in the big regular season games, in the big playoff series. So finally, they have, they've won and beat them. And then they get a shit line up that over the splits goes downhill. And suddenly, this team now is terrible. They didn't even make it into the actual like playoff section of this split, but they still beat G2 in the opener. So I'll point out the prime rogue lineups used to struggle to beat G2. Somehow the bad Roy rogue slash coy lineups do it out of nowhere. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, it's kind of a good point, right? It's kind of counterintuitive. May I ask you a question? Do you have any kind of an intellectual problem? Like, are you retarded or something? Because I swear, every tweet I read from you is pure bullshit. I mean, it's admirable the way you do it, I surely. Mate, what is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? You're going 3-2 on all these series. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Here's a good one. If Knight, I said, if Knight sucked versus T1 at Worlds, then Faker was utter dog shit in the two LCK files. Just go watch the two LCK files. Tell me if you agree or not. This guy goes, it's becoming embarrassing how biased and hateful you, Dom, and Monty are against Faker. Your job is to evaluate his performance, not his fans. Get over yourself. So let's just break this one down. It's becoming embarrassed how biased and hateful I am. Right? So it's biased and hateful to say that if you say Knight sucked in his performance against T1, then by proportion and scale, Faker must have really sucked and therefore been dog shit against the team's Gen G in the LCK finals. That's biased and hateful. It's a hateful statement to make that. By the way, you'll notice there's not a single point he makes in his comment. It's nothing. It's just you're biased and hateful, all against Faker. Uh, just evaluate his performance. I just did evaluate his performance, you actual fucking cretin. I just did it. I just did it. You haven't evaluated his performance. You didn't even reply with an evaluation. You didn't even disagree with what I said. You just said it's hateful and biased. Well, is it right, though? And then he went, yeah, yeah, just evaluate his performance. I just did. I just did. Then you go, not his fans. I did both in one, you twat, because I am talented. I can multitask. You can't read, think, and or speak. Never mind multitask in the same day. You probably have to take a day off, then print, then write the comment the next day. Then the third day, you print, send to me. And then you're like, bloody hell, better have some gamer subs. And then maybe have that sleepy time with health eating to get to sleep because I'm pooped. That's a lot of work for me. And then he goes, your job is to evaluate. This is my job. That's not my job at all. I'm a content creator. I don't know if you're aware of this. I don't work as an analyst in legal legends. I'm not on the events. So I'm definitely not paid in that sense. Nothing I do in my work. Like, it's not even journalism, that tweet. That's nothing I'm obliged to do. I can, that's just my personal opinion on my personal Twitter account. I'm not at all. It's not my job at all on my Twitter account to evaluate his performance. Then not his fans. No, no, I can evaluate anything I want on my Twitter account. It's just my opinion. I evaluate the fans. I'll evaluate you, evaluating me, evaluating the fans, and how shit that makes you, what a cretin you are. Then get over yourself. No, no you're the random person who's had to come to my Twitter account, get triggered that I actually posted something you don't like, and then tell me what my job is and who I am in life and what I'm like and how hateful I am, and that then you tell me to get over myself. How about, here's a crazy idea. Get over yourself and move on with your life. Do you see me tweeting at you? Nah. In fact, I'm using you now as sort of like an alley-oop and then I'm just 360 slamming your ass through the ba the basket because I get money from this, believe it or not. And it's funny. I actually get joy out of dunking on you. Another one where they get mad. So when we did the episode of Summer Insight, we talked about the greatest teams of all time. This guy goes, I knew the cop was coming, Thorin, but this is next level insane. Woo! 2015 SKT did everything JDG did and better. 2023 JDG is so bad. They lost to Frauds T1 that Gen G 3 0 easy. Come on now. I know worlds doesn't matter because now it doesn't fit your narrative. But make less obvious, please. So, okay, let's go through this. So, it's Corp to say that JDG is the best team of all time. I just say go and listen to my reasons. If you evaluate it as a corp as the end, that's your opinion. Yeah, you're entitled to that opinion. Do what you want with it. Then he goes, I, I think the idea, it's insane though. I'd probably say that's incredibly hyperbolic and not really that great a statement. He goes, 2015 did everything JDG did and better. Um, they didn't win MSI. Just going to put that out there. Am I supposed to ignore that? You're, you're the one who said it. I didn't make you type. They did everything JDG did and better. Then let's consider that... Um, then you have, it says, 2023 JDG is so bad. So what's great about this, by the way, 
is we're talking about narratives and choosing things that we force into our own narratives. So instead of saying, I think JDG is one of the best teams of all time, and they maybe even were the best team this year, but they're not the greatest team of all time, Florian. I think SKT 2015 would be. By the way, that would be an interesting point. He might even agree with you if you frame it properly. His logic is, because I'm biased and I'm the one fitting things in a narrative, since JDG lost one series to T1, who themselves, MMA math, lost to Gen G, easy. That means that SKT are frauds. I never said they were frauds, by the way. And... They lost, since JDG lost to them, that means JDG is so bad. And that's him establishing an, a counter-narrative to my narrative. And he doesn't like the idea that when you don't like a piece of a narrative, you just say it doesn't matter because it doesn't fit your narrative. So being twice LPL champions in MSI doesn't even factor into his thing. It's irrelevant. And the fact that he won none of those tournaments, didn't win a tournament until Worlds that year, that's irrelevant. But he's not himself ignoring things to fit things to his criteria. And also, make it less obvious. I'll just ask you this, guys. Is it kind of obvious what his perspective is, who he supports and who he thinks is good? I think it's pretty blatant, isn't it? This is mad unhinged. When I did my reflections with Carlos, I did one of these posts where none of these are even my opinions. These are just things that Carlos said or talked about. So because Carlos at one point says, reckless is a cunt, his word's not mine. And by the way, if you know how media works, you'd be a fool not to mention that he said that. It's very interesting. You want to see what he said and the context. This guy, remember, I haven't said any of those opinions, goes, reckless owns you. He lives in your head. And the first thing you will think about while dying is his Swedish face. <laughs> Remember, remember, this isn't like a tweet of me even saying anything about Reckless. This is an interview with Carlos, where Carlos says he's a cunt. But that means Reckless owns me, and he lives in my head. Carlos is the one talking about him. And that when I die, by the way, if it's soon, I guess that's not impossible. But I would assume I'm going to die in 30, 40, 50 years from now. When I die, the... First thing I will think about, he probably means last thing, but you know what I mean. First thing I'll think about is reckless is Swedish. Why is Swedish as well? Like, why not just his face? Why is Swedish? As all like, I'm going to see him is going like, <laughs> maybe that's not reckless. Maybe. maybe that's the fucking machine elves welcoming me home to the DMT realm where the fucking bardo of the soul goes, right? And the, it's a waypoint to the afterlife of infinity and the fucking singularity. What are you talking about? Mate, the joke there is you're acting like Abner Nutter, but you're just unhinged replying, going, eh, yeah, uh, you mentioned that someone else said a player I like is a cunt. You will die and think about him the second before you pass from this mortal realm. You're a fucking lunatic, mate. You are exactly the people that make everyone hate reckless fans. Idiots like you. Last year, I said... I dislike Reckless because he played a fraudulent style of League of Legends for a superstar for the majority of his career and was a massive diva for years behind the scenes. More on that soon. Reckless stands here opposite because he isn't Reckless. This guy goes, you have terrible knowledge about LOL, stick to CSGO, mate. The joke there is, hey, isn't that game? Just tell me I don't know anything about that game. But obviously the joke is, you don't know anything about either domain. How's generational talent ball working out? Well, the joke is this is from last year. So you're going to go, it's terrible, isn't it? I'd actually say if you look how he played in Carmen Cop now with terrible team. He actually looks really good. If you saw him in the in-house and sulky, you'll know why we call him generational talent spoiler. I know people in the Chinese scene who say he's unbelievable. Then he goes, how's Western Goat perks? Well, what's great is he, st he was still the Western Goat though, wasn't he? Like he still has all the qualifications. He's still got way more LEC titles than Reckless. He's still got way more MSI titles than Reckless. He's been in more um, world semi-finals than Reckless. He's done it all, mate. Like, what, what, what more do you want? Like, what, what, do you, what do you want him to do exactly? What's he supposed to get together? What you know, what, what, what's changed? Surely best ADC in EU won't finish last day, right? Okay, so upsets finished last. Go back to crying about Reckless Flash every episode of your shitty podcast for bait clicks, worthless. So what's great about this is, right, he doesn't ever use any of his knowledge. He doesn't give any opinions. He just says that because I've said balls generational talent, like, how's that working out? That's it. It's left to me to answer and explain why I'm an idiot. So he can't do it. How's Western Goat Perks? Uh, he's all right. How are you doing? What's up? What's up with your mum? What are you talking about? You haven't, you haven't even said anything. That's the way everyone's supposed to just infer what it means. Surely best ADC in EU won't finish last day. You, can, you can't be the best ADC and finish last. Like, mate, have you ever seen where some of the, like, cracked out Viper rosters finish now? Yeah, not last, but they're nowhere near, like, doing anything. And he, he sometimes looks like the best ADC in the whole world. So already it tells me you don't have a very good, I don't know, 
knowledge about League of Legends. And then he goes, go back to crying about records. You're actually crying right now about all my opinions about people who, except for Upset, weren't mentioned in that first tweet. The tweet's about Reckless and Upset, and you're bringing in born perks and then telling me to go back to crying about other stuff, but you're crying about unrelated stuff. And then he goes, Reckless flash every episode of your podcast. By the way, by your own logic, how did Reckless work out? The Go ADC of Europe, how did it work? Did he flash and not actually manage to kill the Nexus and therefore get eliminated, not go to MSI, not go to playoffs, not go to Worlds, and then never, and then basically have to roll swap, and now he's on a challenger team in Korea playing Janna, like... I don't know, mate, by your own logic, infer what you have. How did that work out for the greatest ADC and greatest European player of all time? How did it work out? Oh, can things be different in your career? Can you be amazing at one point and not as good later? And then when you go to go back to baiting for shitty bait clicks, by your own logic, by replying and clicking on my tweet, you engaged with it and gave me the clicks and engagement dickhead. And where it says worthless, no, no, literally I'm going to make money off this video. I will go and have a fucking filet mignon somewhere and when I've finished eating it, know that just your stupid rage, which I then entertainingly mocked, allowed me to have that meal to me for free because of your shit comment. On the same comment, stop sucking upsets ass already, man. This is one of those guys where it always goes this angle. Get ready. Reckless is remembered for being one of the best players in the history of Europe. That's actually accurate. Being for years world class in his position, depending on what years we're talking about, and we're on that one. While upset is, get ready, that. So there's already one way of framing Reckless's career if you only look at the best parts. And then he goes. And by the way, by his logic, you don't remember the end of someone's career. You just remember the early part where it's very successful. That doesn't make sense. It's the other way around. You remember the more recent things. Hence why you're going to be obsessed, like everyone is, with the idea of upset socks and vitality, right? So instead of remembering, you know, remember, by the way, Reckless has never won an LEC title. It was called EU LCS when Reckless won it, and he last won it back in 2018. Then it became the LEC. Right, guys, it's 2024 now. This post was in 2023, five years after 2018. So we're saying Reckless will only be remembered for the early part of his career and all the things he did then. All the years after, no one will remember because I said so. But upset, no one will remember his Schalke run or the other Schalke run or when he was on Fnatic or when actually or Origin started out good in the first. No one will ever remember these. Or when Vitality was actually like the third team in spring this very year, the previous one. No one will ever remember that because I say what everyone remembers and I've decided people only remember the worst things of upset, which is coming last twice, on two different super teams. And then I just only remember the good things about Reckless. So why does everyone else not do the same? Everyone does do the same as me. And by the way, when he goes two different super teams, I'm just going to throw this out there. He's actually calling a team, for real, that contains these players in 2020. So Alfari, I agree, super team player. Upset, I agree, super team player. After that, get the fuck out, because the other three players are Cersei. You're having a fucking laugh, right? Nuke Doc, look, maybe in the past that would make you a super team, a year or two earlier. And then Death Destiny as the support into Jack Troll. Destiny and Jack Troll and Xerxes are part of a super team. What's even the point in those words? What happens as usual is, you're such a hater, you had to hype up all of Upset's teammates to be better than they are, Destiny and Jack Troll, so that then you could imply you had like all the help in the universe and that that means he sucks because he came last. By the way, Born Photon are even fucking rookies in the colloquial sense when they played in this fucking team. And Kaiser was even considered washed when Upset played with him. But let's ignore that. These are super teams. I mean, actually, I would say Vitality. I know why people call it a super team, but it's not really. Like, it's only really perks and Upset are the super team part, right? Look, in the future, people like Born Photon could make you a super team. By the way, I probably called it a super team myself at the time in the hype, but seems a bit unreasonable the way this guy's framing it. Maybe if Reckless joins Vitality, the LEC talent will point out when he plays like shit, because obviously they used to never shut the fuck up, point out when Upset played bad. This guy goes, shitting on Reckless on daily bases, he means bases, but okay, is so pathetic from you. Right, if it's shitting on someone's pathetic, let's hope he doesn't shit on me. Find some peace, man. I love that. So this is already going great because he's made a good point. Like if you shit on someone on a daily basis, that's pathetic. Find peace, sort of an enlightened message. If the tweet ends there, all good. Wait a minute, after telling me to find peace, he's not going to insult me, is he? You were compl you were commolished, not accomplished, you were commolished nothing. Right, so shitting on someone is pathetic and you should find peace. By the way, while you're finding peace, you accomplish nothing. 
Did I accomplish nothing? Did I not win Journalist of the Year? Did I not make millions of dollars from this, millions from this industry? Did I not like get to interview pretty much all the players I ever wanted, go to a bunch of world championships and all sorts of games? Um, I've been friends with some of the greatest players of all time. I've had a fucking fantastic career where I've accomplished many, 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 many things. Meanwhile, what have you accomplished? I mean, remember, we'll, fight, we'll complete the logic. You accomplish nothing and have no right to shit on one of the best, greatest ADCs in EU history. Right. Are you one of the greatest ADCs in EU history? No. Therefore, you have no right to have an opinion. All right. Wait a second. Have you accomplished what I've accomplished in esports? Because this is an esports contextual point. Well, then how can you shit on me and tell me what I can say about Reckless? Spoiler. My career's accomplishments are closer to Reckless than yours are to mine, Billy No Balls, who, sh who fucking stacks beans on a shelf, you twat. It's a shame K-Corp doesn't have an elite European ADC like Upset, is what I said Ironically, in 2022. Because <laughs> this is obviously when, when Reckless play. I actually laugh at that myself because obviously since then, Upset has got a Carmine Corp and they've been shit, haven't they? But this is actually when Reckless played for, for Carmine Corp. This guy goes, did Reckless ban your mother? That's immediately where mine goes. His mind doesn't go to like, wow, he doesn't like Reckless's playing style. Or just, he doesn't like something about like the fan culture around him or he doesn't like Reckless's actually. No, no. Wait a minute, I think that Reckless wasn't that good in Check's Notes Carmine Corp where they weren't even winning the LFL. Yeah, I wonder why I'd say he's not that good. Meanwhile, Upset, at the time, and Fnatic won the best, probably the best Western ADC. I wonder why I'd say that they'd be way better if they had that guy instead of Reckless. Oh no, that must mean, first obvious assumption, Occam's Razor, is Reckless fucked my mother. Fucked her. Or do you just want to eat his ass? Right, he's either fucked my mother, or I want to put Reckless on my table, spread his ass cheeks, apply jelly, and eat his ever-loving, fucking, gaping, hungry hole. Because I'm obsessed with him. Guys... When I say I think Upset will probably be better in Calming Cop than Reckless, that means I'm obsessed with Reckless because he banged my mother or I want to eat his ass. I'm obsessed with him. Not this guy. He's not obsessed with him. I didn't even mention Reckless in the original tweet, you'll notice. I'm obsessed with him. You see what I mean? When you read it out loud, you can't, you can't get mad at them, boys. I used to criticise Reckless, I say, for winning LEC with many of the best players in the league on his team. Now, I can only praise him for managing to lose, two times no less, with equally good or better talent around him. This was in the G2 Super Team. Always impressive when a player reinvents himself. Obviously, great banter, isn't it? This guy replies, imagine intentionally targeting someone when deep down, you know they have nothing to do with the loss. It can never be reckless. Was anything to do. By the way, what you'll find out in my video coming up soon is he was actually part of the reason that that team struggled. He capped them in many ways that I won't get into because I won't burn the gold now. But I literally already knew and do know and will show you what went on there in that sense. And then he goes, but you have psychological issues. So every loss in G2 or Re Fnatic is Reckless's fault. What's great about that is it's actually inferred by you and it's pretty obvious is what you think that it can never Never be his fault. You didn't even say something like, oh, maybe in game two of this series he was, but the rest of the season he was great. In the you don't even say that. Your implication is, I'm mad forever suggesting a G2 Fnatic fault could ever be Reckless's fault, even when I know G2 Fnatic players, coaches and owners, and Fnatic players, coaches and owners, and you don't know those people and only get to hear what they say publicly for PR reasons and political expedience. But no, no, I'm mad forever suggesting it could be one of the five players' fault and the connecting player, but it could never actually be his fault. You're not mad for thinking it could never be his fault. Then he goes, that would be a banger, hashtag fan logic, if you had the ego to one day read your own tweets before hitting send. Ironic, really, if you think about what he tweeted. This is from YouTube. Thorin needs to rewatch his own shit because his head is too big for a video game journalist. Everything great that has happened, supposedly Thorin did it or made it happen. He's always saying, I did that, I made that, this sport would be nothing without me. Like, bro, calm down, take a hit. Nah. I think he means hint, and then he does, like, the cool glasses. Right, best part about this is, like, the idea that I need to rewatch it. I mean, in a way... I am sort of by reading your comment. I get what you mean there. Huh? Then he goes, my head's too big because I always imply I did this or made it happen. And he doesn't list any of the things or say that I didn't make them happen. So by his logic, by the way, I actually 
could have done all those things and made them happen. And then he's like, you really, you did do all those things because I don't know. You should stop saying you did do them. <laughs> when are you like just a journalist or something? Well, no, I'm also someone who did all those things. Not you haven't named a single one I didn't do. Then he goes, I made this spot would be nothing without me. I've never said that ever in my life. Never in my entire life. I said people can't say I'm not esports because I am esports. But the idea I said, like, I did it all and no one else did anything. It'd be nothing. About me. That's just imaginary. You made that up. What's weird is I've done so many thousands of videos and hundreds of thousands of tweets, but you can't ever find real ones to get mad at like the other people. You have to just make up some shite. Like, bro, calm down, take a hint. Yeah, brilliant. I took the hint. Journalist of the year 2017 must be the best joke ever. RL should have won the award every year. One, you're never going to hurt my feelings because I actually think Richard Lewis is the best journalist of all time in esports. So yeah, I would actually give him the award every single year. I think probably even over myself. But I'll tell you what, being as no award ever just gets given to one person every single year, no matter how good they are. If you have to give it to someone else, I'd certainly be a great second best many years, especially because you don't know interviews of journalism and I'm the GOAT interviewer. It's not even close. So take Korean female Travis Gafford and you and her can fuck right off. I don't really care, mate. I'm better. Suck on them. This is amazing. Esports historian and journalist since 2001. Strange how no articles can be found prior to 2010. Why do you act like you're old school? Now, what's brilliant is you absolutely can find loads of articles going back to 2001, even if you use the Wayback machine. You can just basically, you can go look on my website, which since then, obviously it wasn't out at the time. Since then, I've launched a website. I archived a bunch of the stuff. I've been quite lazy, so I haven't got past something like 2008, but I did quite a lot. There's loads of articles on there from SK Gaming, ES, um, e, uh, ESEA. In the original site was Pro Cyber News. I wrote for Games.New, but that was a paywall site, so you can't see those. There's loads. The joke is there's no one has more actual articles. I might even have more news posts. I, I just sent 1,700 posts or something on SK Gaming until like 2012. So the idea before 2010, there's nothing. The internet's full of it. The joke is, if you just Google Tharian article, it's not going to be the first one, dickhead. You don't even know because you're not old school. There wasn't even Google at the beginning. At least it wasn't the big site. And it didn't archive all the esports stuff. They didn't even have the bots back then. So you don't know what you're... The idea of all the things you're going to clear, it's not even that I'm shit or exaggerate. I just wasn't even around and I'm pretending to be old school. Go ask all the people who were around then if I was back then why do you think in these interviews people even say like, oh, I remember 2004 you were at that CPL with me no I wasn't no, it's all made up never happened apparently I came along in 2010 Thorin came along in 2010 and pretended to be really old school I have literally been paid I, I could provide proof if I wanted since 2001 in this industry I've written loads of articles again an utterly absurd statement why did your shirts keep changing? This is just a funny one, because as far as I can tell, he thinks my entire channel is one guy on one day. It's like, to him, it's weird that I'm doing... He makes it sound like I'm like some fucking... One of those, like, pop singer divas, like Beyonce. And just to do one show, I have, like, ten costume changes. Like, no, bro, sometimes it's just another day, and I change my clothes and wear other clothing. <laughs> It's not Dexter's lab, you know. I don't just have the same fucking outfit in a, in a cupboard that I pick out from every day. What are you talking about? I put a comment here where because people used to use that stupid disingenuous logic that since Brady came to the box and they were seven and nine and then he won the Super Bowl with the next season, that means he did it all. That shows how goated he is. Well, I showed that the same logic can be applied to make him not goated because then in his last season with the box, they went eight and nine. Then they got Baker Mayfield and lost some of their talent and went nine and eight and won more games. So by that logic, it shows how bad he was and that Baker Mayfield is a better quarterback. How's that bed you made? Because I made the point of how bad the bed you made because you set that logic up and inferred it one way. So I took the same logic and applied, put in different na fucking numbers to the equation and the answer to spit out is not something you'd like, but you made that bed, so you lie in it. So this guy can't even consider the logic of it. He goes, I'm sure while you were typing this, you had the big smile proud of how clever you were being you were finally gonna get those damn brady fans and their stupid goat with this awesome zinger to honor that i won't say how silly this makes you sound whoops it's, there's nothing there. He hasn't replied to a single point. I've seen. Nothing he said to anything. He, and best thing is, he actually seems to think that like him and people who are Brady fans who think he's the GOAT are like, they're getting to share in. Like, it's like they actually hang out with Tom Brady and then they all look at my tweets and laugh. They're not just some other losers on the internet just making a comment. Like, they're somehow with Brady and accomplished part of his accomplishment because he's the GOAT. Like, I love people like this. The last one, Sky goes, I fuck your moom and wifey pig face. Right. What's great about this is it. we've reached the point now where are these even humans? You know what I mean? 
Like, the joke is, this feels like if they ever made a real AI, not what they claim they're making now, if they ever made a real attempt at, like, actual artificial intelligence, it feels like it'd be some, like, Lovecraftian fucking scene, right? Be a mixture of tech and fucking spirituality and demonic influences, aromatic aspects coming in. And what happened is, inside this, like, fucking lab slash altar, you'd finally summon forth the AI, and you'd be like, oh, and everyone would be stood with the fucking mighty magical weapons and with the fucking like, Ghostbusters gone and everything. But what's coming? What's coming through? there's something coming through and finally the first ever communication from the artificial intelligence the other side the other realm the entity the other of humanity itself would interact and its first ever words would be i fuck your moom and wifey pig face and then the scientists go shut it down shut it down and walk and die like <laughs> that's, i can't bear yeah brilliant you, you fucked my moom and my wifey pig face okay joke being of course there that was actually a tweet from a, a former British Prime Minister, but he accidentally tagged me. He actually meant it to a, an account about, I guess in this case, it has to be like a young pig. It has to be the mom and the wife. Straight fire reference, if you know what I mean. Okay, there'll be more of these. They won't just be League of Legends. I'll do some CSGO ones. I'll definitely do more League of Legends. I think this series has legs. Remember, the game is up sale until the 9th of February at 2 p.m. EST. 22% off anything on the site. Remember to check out the free samples too. Hey, guys. This is Perks. And you're watching Torin's YouTube channel. I would like you guys to appreciate his YouTube channel, even though he talks sometimes so much bull that not even I can handle it. But most of the time, it's pretty funny and entertaining. I've had to make a lot of tough choices in my career, but thanks to the support of my Patreon community, the Skrilluminati, I never have to make tough financial decisions. So this video and all the rest on my channel are kindly supported by Ahmed Haju, Frisky, Mac Pugnaccio Rakula, Animosity, Jensen Gore, Tobias Berners-Gorney, Tosh, Toucan, and you know it if you've ever heard before, and you'll hear it many times in the future. A special thanks goes out to my main man, Jerry Kizminian. Do you want to ask a question in my video AMA? Do you want to be part of one of those long discussions where we talk about whatever you like in esports? Do you want teasers? Find out who the upcoming guests are going to be. Or maybe you want to suggest a topic for a future Thorin's Thoughts type video. Well, if any of these perks or others appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is today and join the Skrilluminati by joining the Patreon link in the description box below.